Daniel Kudenko, Research Group Leader LR L3S or L3S Research Center der Leibniz Universität Hannover. Und bei ihm geht es auch um 5G. Äh, und zwar das Projekt 5G um Access to Public Spaces. Danke. Bitte schön. Danke. Okay. Ja, um, yeah, uh, we are not uh, a, a startup. Uh, we are actually a project uh, so uh, which has several uh, well established uh, project partners so uh, just a, a uh, but uh, still uh, hopefully uh, I, I can show you some innovative ideas uh, in this project uh, which uh, will actually uh, have impact on potential startups and uh, potential business models so um, just uh, quick introduction so I'm a, a research group leader at the l3s uh, we are one of the bigger uh, AI uh, and data research centers in Germany. So we have about 150 researchers and uh, an annual budget of around 13 to 15 million uh, euros per year. And uh, most of that is actually uh, third party funding so through projects like that. Um, so the project goals of the Five Gaps project is uh, basically to create um, a digital twin of uh, an urban environment or of uh, actually also inside areas uh, of an environment and uh, that is uh, publicly accessible. So it's an, uh, so that uh, people can actually read data, but also applications can not only read data uh, from this uh, digital twin, but also write data into uh, that uh, into their own area of this uh, digital twin. So uh, the idea behind it is uh, that we get a digital representation of the urban space in uh, different resolutions. Uh, depending on the application uh, and we uh, divide uh, the environment into so-called cubelets. These are cubes, uh, three-dimensional cubes, uh, which are uh, just uh, just about um, uh, uh, which uh, depending on the application will have different sizes. So the size could be uh, two by two meters or it could be ten by ten uh, centimeters, depending on that. Uh, so uh, the idea is then uh, on this top of this database, Kubelet database, we then uh, uh, provide a platform for uh, development of apps which use the Kubelet database. So here you can see, for example, one uh, potential uh, example would be here a mobile phone which uh, where you uh, have some kind of augmented reality app which actually reads information from the Kubelet database and then uh, can actually uh, display, for example, uh, corresponding advertisements. Um, also, one of the <laughs> outputs is uh, because we are funded uh, uh, through a 5G pilot uh, project, uh, so therefore uh, we want to demonstrate uh, the use of 5G networks and that's especially relevant for uh, augmented reality applications. In, uh, in so just to give you a bit of an idea of the pot potential applications, so we have uh, certainly route planning and optimization, that's an important uh, factor in uh, an urban environment. So we have a real-time traffic prediction using this digital twin. Uh, we can uh, plan uh, uh, the use of airspace, which will become more relevant when we have actually uh, uh, more and more drones flying around an urban environment, uh, heavy transports uh, and organization of logistics there, and uh, for example, the public transport timetable uh, optimization. Um, in addition, uh, there uh, uh, one of our goals is an adaptive use of urban land uh, uh, and space. So that means uh, parking space utilization should be optimized, and it should be uh, and parking space shouldn't necessarily just be parking space. It could be temporarily be uh, uh, reused for some other things, such as uh, some fair uh, stands on a fair or uh, anything else. So it should be actually very dynamic as well. Uh, area occupancy monitoring is important, and also. Uh, of course, uh, now with uh, e uh, electric cars becoming more prevalent uh, to optimize the charging station infrastructure. 
Um, here you can see uh, our uh, project partners, so we have a fairly big uh, consortium. Uh, so we have uh, research partners, so that's uh, the Leibniz University, uh, Hanover, and especially the L3S, but uh, also uh, Fraunhofer and uh, others, and but also uh, companies which are interested in developing actually applications and uh, demonstration use cases f uh, on top of this platform. So just to give you a brief idea on how this um, uh, 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 thing uh, will work, so we have, uh, we get actually raw data from sensors. These sensors can be cameras or they can be also LIDAR sensors. And uh, these are then processed uh, and uh, anonymized and then sent to uh, the uh, five gaps uh, cloud server. Uh, on this uh, server, we are then uh, doing some uh, state recognition and object recognition to actually uh, fill the cubelet world with data. And uh, then, uh, in uh, addition, we are actually enriching this uh, also through th uh, some prediction models. So uh, we are actually building on top of these uh, also prediction models that can predict the future, uh, the future states of these different cubelets. And uh, then this whole thing is then used, uh, can be visualized uh, in one way or another, uh, for example, in augmented reality or in some other application. And then uh, uh, this uh, is used by various applications. And uh, this is whole, uh, the whole thing is kind of a cycle. So here you can see uh, how data capture works. So we have, uh, this, this is uh, one of our uh, LIDAR uh, vehicles, which is uh, driving through the environment and uh, recording things. So you can see uh, uh, at the bottom the output of such uh, a leader vehicle, which uh, is a, a point cloud. This can be black and white, but it can also be colored. And uh, here you can see uh, uh, a corresponding picture of uh, a factory in, uh, a, a factory hall. Uh, drones can also be used, uh, drones with cameras, uh, as well as uh, sensor input for uh, uh, for the uh, five gaps uh, uh, data uh, database, but also uh, uh, stationary cameras as well. So here is just a brief view of a cubelet, <laughs> as you can see. See, it has three dimensions, but it al has also a fourth dimension, which is time. And uh, when, uh, but of course, there is a challenge here because if you would take uh, all of Hanover and uh, make it into uh, cubelets which are about 10 by 10 centimeters, you would have about 19 tr uh, trillion cubelets. That's a huge number. Of course, uh, for that we need, uh, we at the moment we are not aiming yet to uh, take all of Hanover. We are actually uh, having our experimental area here uh, on Hanover Messe. Uh, but uh, overall, uh, it's a, in any case a challenge on the database to be uh, fast, efficient, uh, and uh, be uh, universally accessible in real time. So uh, uh, the cubelets themselves, uh, uh, so we have um, kind of when you uh, have an object such as a tree, uh, that is uh, then stored in the uh, cubelet uh, database, but it uh, can be stored in different resolutions. So one in kind of micro cubelets, which uh, are these small 10, uh, 10 by 10 centimeter uh, cubelets, which then form a tree, but also into a macro cubelet, which uh, just says this is a tree and then forms a cube around it. Uh, and this uh, can then be all visualized in a kind of a vector based presentation or in some uh, augmented reality. Uh, so, how do we actually use this? So, we are coming from the area of AI at uh, L3S, so there is uh, there's AI technology involved, of course, and um, uh, first, uh, um, uh, very important is the cubelet state recognition, so we get sensor data, raw sensor data as input, and the output should be some cubelet state, and uh, when it comes to, for example, an application with parking spaces, it's important uh, whether uh, one of the states uh, says whether it's occupied or free, uh, is there a car there, what type of car is it, uh, and so on. Uh, then we have cubelet state prediction, so for that we need uh, uh, to create prediction models for future cubelet states, and also as an application we have also multi-drone navigation planning where we use the cubelet world where the drones can actually book in advance uh, airspace. And this uh, should, of course, be done in an uh, optimal coordinated ma manner uh, so that um, the uh, paths that the drones are taking are not too long and uh, there is no congestion uh, being created. 
So uh, business models uh, is of course also an uh, important part of this project because in the end we want a, a kubelet platform which is accessible to everyone and uh, that is uh, uh, also on which people can develop new ideas. So at the moment we have some applications in mind but there are plenty of applications which we might not even know about. And then uh, that is for which uh, th this is then where we uh, provide this platform, which uh, is, uh, can is open to uh, companies and startups who want to uh, to uh, build something on top of it, and then uh, uh, create uh, some new ideas. And uh, all of that, of course, uh, with support in finding some uh, ideas about uh, business models. How can we actually monetize this? Uh, there is also, of course, the possibility to bring in third-party data. For example, um, uh, users who are there could actually for providing their data, for example, from the pa camera picture of a mobile phone, through that they could, in exchange, get access to, uh, to certain applications. So there's uh, some new economy that might be working here. Uh, and uh, so we are uh, working on this part uh, as well in, uh, in this consortium. Okay, so this gave you a little bit of an overview of this Five Gaps project. And uh, here are uh, some contact details. And the whole thing is uh, funded by uh, the uh, Federal Ministry for uh, uh, Traffic and in Infrastructure. Thank you. Yeah. Great project. Thank you. Um, Fragen? Are there any questions? So, um, uh, are there any? Yeah, there's yes. a question back oh, there. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Could could you please go to the mic, please? Well, I hand it over. Mm -hmm. So uh, my question is, uh, how uh, dynamically is your uh, Cupid? Kubelet database. Can you fill it with real-time data? Gives it a real-time picture of the environment? Yeah, uh, the, uh, the goal is uh, to have a real-time, but of course this uh, uh, depends on the sensors that you have placed in the environment. So uh, in a factory hall, it's definitely possible to do it in real-time, uh, but uh, in an uh, urban environment, of course, uh, it becomes difficult to have a camera in every uh, uh, street corner, and there's also, of course, some uh, questions about uh, data protection here. Uh, we are doing it partially solving it through anonymizing the data before it is sent to the server, but uh, in general there's uh, always a question about cameras in, 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 an, uh, in a city. Mm -hmm. environment, what do you mm -hmm. think? How uh, real-time can it be? How much uh, processing power or time do you need to update? or to hold so your database uh, yeah, yeah, so uh, a we, are uh, we are uh, uh, aiming at um, basically fractions of a second. So, so this is basically what we're aiming, and this is especially important also for, for example, drone traffic as well, because there it's important to know <laughs> that there is an, uh, another drone so, uh, to uh, prevent collisions, but uh, in terms of uh, a factory environment also to, to be actually in fractions of a second. Okay. Mm. Okay. Thank you, and um, yeah, 